all right guys so let's first off begin by understanding platelet function problems which means we are on the left arm of our previous scheme right your patients come with superficial bleeding and you confirm it with a prolonged bleeding time and you get a platelet count which turns out to be normal but your platelet is not functioning properly now I'm going to give you a scheme because it all goes back down to your basics guys if you understand how a primary plated plug is formed obviously you mess around with those things and you get a defect so let's try this approach let's try to rewire your brain to a different form of seeing medicine so this is what we're gonna do let's form a primary plated plug guys so first off I need a blood vessel all right and in the blood vessel I have endothelial cells what I'm gonna do is I am going to damage my endothelial cells all right I'm gonna cut this guy and I am gonna damage his endothelial cell the moment I damage this patient's endothelial cell I will be exposing something known as sub endothelial collagen guys once you have sub endothelial collagen exposure next thing obviously is you need your platelets right so let's quickly draw our platelets over here and I want you to remember platelets have two types of granules guys it has got a dense granule and it has got an alpha granule dense granules contains a ADP and calcium all right whereas your alpha granule contains one Willebrand factor and fibrinogen right clearly you seeing these components you know that these things these granules need to degranulate for your platelets to actually form your platelet also has three important receptors guys three important receptors number one is GP1B receptor number two you have GP2B 3A receptor and you also have your ADP receptor all right so these are your three important receptors fine now I have damaged this person's endothelium and I've exposed subendothelial collagen now what's the first step that happens you need to bind something to your subendothelial collagen what are you gonna bind you are gonna bind von Willebrand factor and you could be like, wait a second, you said von Willebrand factors in the platelets. It's present in the alpha granules. But how is the von Willebrand factor coming now? You haven't even invited platelet to the party yet, right? Well, that may be that because von Willebrand factor is present somewhere else too. Where is that somewhere else, guys? It's present in the endothelial cells. It's present in the endothelial cells in specific bodies known as Weibel Pallari bodies. Weibel Palladi bodies, all right? Why will Palladi bodies contain one Willebrand factor? So I damage endothelium, I expose subendothelial collagen, and you're already releasing one Willebrand factor. Now your one Willebrand factor binds to your subendothelial collagen. All right, what's your next step, guys? You need your platelet to bind to your one Willebrand factor. All right, here comes the platelet. It binds to one Willebrand factor. Why are which receptor? Wait a second, this is our GP1B receptor. All right, this is your GP1B receptor. Your GP1B receptor is in fact nowadays called by a new name. It is called GP1B95, guys. It's GP1B95. Five. For all practical purpose, I'm just going to write 1B because it has less room on my board. All right. So GP1B receptor binds to your one Willebrand factor. All right. What is this step called? This is known as adhesion. Adhesion. There you go. All right. So adhesion happens. Your plate that binds your one Willebrand factor. Excellent. What happens next? You need to degranulate these bad boys and release your contents, right? So you degranulate and you release ADP along with your other components as well but ADP plays a very important role ADP is released and it binds to self receptors known as ADP receptor and this ADP receptor is also called P2Y12 receptors all right it's the same name so now once your ADP binds your ADP receptor you get a step called activation you get activation guys so you're done with adhesion you're done with activation all right just like a transformer transforms your platelet now transforms and expresses it's really long receptor which is called your gp 2 b 3A receptor all right basically at this point is where you're going to get something known as attachment right you're going to get attachment what's going to happen is your platelets needs to attach to other platelets so let's bring in another platelet on the opposite side here and this platelet is going to bind to this platelet how does it bind to another platelet is by presence of fibrinogen guys fibrinogen where did the fibrinogen come from 
started ah it comes from your platelets right it came from your platelets there you go this is the formation of your primary plated plug now is this a mature clot it is not right remember if you want a mature clot guys you need to convert this fibrinogen which is like this fibrinogen to form something called fibrin which means you need to make connections between your fibrinogen balls right you need to form connection between your fibrinogen balls in order to do so what do you need you need factor 2 which is part of your coagulation cascade now how the coagulation cascades get activated is a different story I will tell you that part of the story in your coagulation cascade however for now I want you to focus on your platelet function disorders so what happens is you need your factor 2 to convert your fibrinogen to fibrin basically converts makes these connections between your fibrinogen molecules does it do it by itself no it also needs a very unlucky number to come and be the glue to form this mature fibrin clot which is factor 13 now just to give you guys a little heads up the moment you actually start making your primary plated plug you actually do activate your coagulation cascade how you do so is your subendothelial collagen in fact goes and directly activates your factor 12 and starts your intrinsic cascade of your coagulation pathway whereas the moment you damage your endothelial cells you release something known as thromboplastin and thromboplastin goes and activates your factor 7 and activates your extrinsic pathway will eventually form your factor 2 and as a result you are going to get your fibrin mesh so let's get back here now all right let's start from the very beginning guys now i told you the moment you come to a platelet function disorder to question it in two ways right is it reversible or irreversible so when i said reversible i said it is going to be because of uremia or drugs right why does uremia cause platelet to not function properly because it cannot degranulate your dense and alpha granules and as a result your platelet cannot function properly there you go that's a point for you in the USMLE exam next question drugs are you going to memorize your drugs no you're not we're going to memorize the drugs why because you understand the mechanism and you know the answer think about it so if you come here right I told you ADP receptor blockers or P2 white well inhibitors drugs such as clopidogrel right or you got prosugrel or you have ticlopidine right these medications basically block your ADP receptors and as a result will not be expressing your GP2B3A and as a result your platelet cannot function so you understand it that's it let's move on to your GP2B3A receptors I told you certain medication can actually block this what medications the medications are called abseximab tyrofeban and eptifibetide fibetide there you go so these medications can actually block your gp2b3 receptors and prevent your platelet from forming that's another reversible cause all right the only medication that i haven't mentioned here is probably aspirin aspirin guys as you know aspirin is a irreversible blocker of your cyclooxygenase pathway by blocking cyclooxygenase 1 and 2 and as a result you do not produce something that's required for your platelet plug to form such as thromboxane a2 guys thromboxane a2 is a component that's actually produced by your cyclooxygenase pathway which is required for your platelet to function and it also causes vasoconstriction and causes the stasis and platelet plug formation so if somebody takes aspirin you shut this pathway off and therefore you're not going to get your thromboxane a2 and this prevents your platelet from functioning that's it so reversible causes i think you guys already understood uremia aspirin p2 white valve inhibitors gp2b3a inhibitors there you go these are all questions in the usmle once you understand it you never ever have to memorize it ever again in your life all right what about the genetic disorders which i mentioned let's come back here when you damage your endothelial cells what binds your subendothelial collagen guys von willebrand factor what happens if you don't have von willebrand factor your platelet plug cannot form if they ask you a question what step is this it is the step of adhesion there you go then number two what binds to your von willebrand factor from your platelets it's why a receptor known as gp 
GP1B. What if you genetically lack this receptor, guys? GP1B receptor, what's going to happen? You're going to get Bernard Solier's disease. And again, what step is this? This step is also adhesion, okay? And then we're going to move on to your GP2B3A receptor, which is right here. If you congenitally lack this, you're going to get Glanzmann's thrombasthenia. So these are your three genetic conditions. Obviously, think about it. If you have a lack of one Willebrand factor, would you get a low platelet count? No, platelet count is going to be normal, but it cannot function properly. What about GP1B? Yes, platelet count is going to be normal, but your platelet cannot have adhesion. It cannot function properly. Thirdly, if you do not have GP2B3A, guys, would your platelet count have to decrease? No, it is normal, but it cannot function properly. That is it guys, if you came to your left arm of your scheme, if you have a normal platelet count but not functioning properly, now you understood everything. Once you know this mind map, you can expand on it and get that 240 that you deserve. Alright, so now let's go into decreased platelet count.